There are six bills and four resolutions being voted on this week, April 24th through April 30th in the U.S. House of Representatives. Let's find out what these bills are all about and let you be the judge on whether or not they should be passed in the House of Representatives. The first bill on the agenda this week is the Republican plan to provide a responsible increase to the debt ceiling. The bill they introduced is called the Limit, Save, Grow Act of 2023. It is a 320-page bill that would open the debt ceiling until March 31st, 2024, or allow a $1.5 trillion increase, whichever comes first. The debt ceiling will only be raised a maximum of $1.5 trillion before March 31st, 2024. Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy says the plan will save the U.S. $4.5 trillion over the next decade by capping annual growth at 1%, taking back unspent COVID relief funds, repealing most of the energy and climate tax credits from the Inflation Reduction Act, and preventing the implementation of Biden's student debt cancellation and much more. Link in the description to read the full bill. Another bill that will be voted on this week is the Secure Space Act of 2023. The bill was introduced on January 31st by Democratic Representative Frank Pallone Jr. from New Jersey's 6th District. The bill was co-sponsored by Republican Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers from Washington's 5th District. The purpose of the bill is to amend the Secure and Trusted Communications Network Act of 2019 to prohibit the Federal Communications Commission from granting a license or United States market access for a non-geostationary orbit satellite system if the license or grant of the market access would be held or controlled by an entity that produces or provides any covered communications equipment or service or an affiliate of such an entity. The bill essentially prohibits the FCC from issuing satellite licenses or other related authorizations to untrusted actors. Representative Pallone Jr. and Representative Kathy Rogers believe America must keep pace with the rapidly evolving satellite communications industry and ensure the United States is leading the way in next generation satellite technologies. Satellites can connect people in hard to reach areas with high speed internet service provide more competitive choice in the market and boost everyday services in the transportation and emergency communication sectors. Comment whether you think this bill will pass or not. Another bill the House will be voting on is the Precision Agriculture Satellite Connectivity Act. This bill was introduced by Republican Representative Robert Lada from Ohio's 5th District. The bill was co-sponsored by one other Republican Representative Troy Balderson and two Democratic Representatives Robin Kelly and Susie Lee. The purpose of the bill is to require the Federal Communications Commission or FCC to review certain rules of the commission and develop recommendations for rule changes to promote precision agriculture and for other purposes. This is a bill to give the FCC 15 months to report to Congress its findings on what rules the FCC has relating to fixed satellite service, mobile satellite service, and earth exploration satellite service, what needs to be changed, and how they plan to change them. Precision agriculture gives farmers the ability to more effectively use crop inputs, including fertilizers, pesticides, tillage, and irrigation water. Representative Kelly and Lada believe this is a bill to promote promote precision agriculture, which will maximize yield, efficiency, and profitability. This bill puts America's innovation and ingenuity to work to ensure that farmers have the resources they need to continue to provide the backbone of our food supply. Comment whether you like this bill or not. On March 3rd, Republican Representative Earl Carter introduced the Institute for Telecommunication Sciences Codification Act. The bill was co-sponsored by two Democratic representatives, Brittany Peterson and Susie Lee. The purpose of the bill is to codify the Institute for Telecommunication Sciences and to direct the Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Communications and Information to establish an initiative to support the development of emergency communication and tracking technologies and for other purposes. The bill would require the ITS to develop emergency communication and tracking technologies to locate trapped individuals in confined spaces such as underground mines. The bill also would require the ITS to study radio frequency emissions, determine spectrum propagation characteristics, and test technologies that enhance spectrum sharing between federal and non-federal entities among other activities. Because the ITS works on those activities under such law, the Congressional Budget Office estimates that implementing those requirements would have no additional costs. Comment if you think this technology is a good idea. Another bill introduced on March 3rd by Republican Representative Bill Johnson from Ohio's 6th District was the Advanced Local Emergency Response Telecommunications Parity Act, or the Alert Parity Act. It was co-sponsored by Democratic Representative Kim Schreier. The purpose of the bill is to direct the Federal Communications Commission to issue rules for the provision of emergency connectivity service and for other purposes. This is a bill to make sure everyone is able to make 911 calls. In a press release, Representative Johnson states, 
the Alert Parity Act would ensure every American, regardless of their zip code, would be able to receive critical emergency alerts and make 911 calls. This life-saving legislation would enable access to emergency services for areas that would otherwise not have access to cellular services, especially in rural areas like eastern Ohio. I think we can all agree that this is a good bill. A resolution being voted on in the House of Representatives this week is the demanding that the government of the People's Republic of China and the Communist Party of China immediately release Mark Sweden. Mark Sweden, a U.S. citizen from Luling, Texas, is being unjustly and arbitrarily detained by the government of the People's Republic of China, according to the United States government. On November 13, 2012, Mark Swiden was abducted by officers of the Public Safety Bureau while on a business trip to the People's Republic of China, and on December 21, 2012, Swiden was formally arrested following an indictment issued by the Public Prosecution's Office of the People's Procuratoriate of Xi Jinping City, alleging that Sweden had part of a criminal conspiracy with 11 other individuals to manufacture and traffic drugs. People's Republic of China security officials repeatedly attempted to coerce Sweden into signing a confession. Sweden refused to sign a confession and pleaded not guilty. Also, a People's Republic of China court sentenced Sweden to death, which he has appealed. Unfortunately, this resolution will not free Mark Sweden, but it will bring recognition to his case. Another resolution being voted on this week is the encouraging the expansion and strengthening of the Abraham Accords to urge other nations to normalize relations with Israel and ensure that existing agreements reap tangible security and economic benefits for the citizens of those countries and all peoples in the region. The purpose of the bill is to encourage the expansion and strengthen the Abraham Accords to urge other nations to normalize relations with Israel to ensure that existing agreements reap tangible security and economic benefits for the citizens of those countries and all peoples in the region. Do you think this resolution will be passed? Comment below. A concurrent resolution introduced by Matt Gates from Florida's 1st District being voted on reads as follows. Directing the President pursuant to Section 5C of the War Powers Resolution to remove all United States armed armed forces other than United States armed forces assigned to protect the United States Embassy from Somalia. The President would have to remove all troops from Somalia not later than the date that is 365 days after the date of the adoption of this resolution. There is also a joint resolution disapproving the rules submitted by the Department of Commerce relating to procedures covering suspension of liquidation duties and estimated duties in accord with Presidential Proclamation 10414. Make sure you share this video with two friends to help inform them on the bills being voted on this week. And Thanks for watching as always.